States, the United States, and our people. Joining me now, investigative journalist and Daily Ledger contributor Kimberly Dvorak. Kimberly, I've uh, called this really now a, 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 what amounts to a declaration of war against the United States. I guess the White House and uh, President Obama don't agree, but I think it is. When you see what we saw on that video, that is a war against all Americans. Absolutely. Military officials that I've spoken with since the release of this video, which is absolutely horrific for a journalist to have to, you know, kind of go through this. We went through this with Daniel Pearl, of course, the Wall Street Journal, um, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who I've been in a courtroom with. Um, this is absolutely atrocious. Their family's handling this very well, but make no mistake, this is their declaration of war against the United States. We've got military people coming out and, and quietly talking about it, and then we have some actually coming out and talking about it publicly. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to look to the administration to, to respond appropriately. Are they? It doesn't look like they're going to respond the way they need to. A couple of things. Uh, they're clearly not afraid of Obama. Uh, and I think that's because of his history. You know, uh, they've seen this president over the last six years, and, and he's feckless. Um, but also, we should note that this terrorist organization is very well funded. You know, as a video journalist, some of the things I noticed about that horrific video is that it was well produced. I mean, pretty well produced for being out in the middle of the desert. It was a two-camera shoot. And that's, I mean, that's just odd for, you know, this, this kind of thing. And also, it was framed correctly, and, you know, it was produced pretty well, and, and right down to the clothing. And I'm, listen, I'm not making light of this at all. I'm analyzing it. Yeah. And what I'm getting at is, these guys are well funded. They know what they're doing. They're westernized as well, clearly, because they know how to go through and produce a video of such high caliber. We had the, you know, Prime Minister of England leave his vacation and say, look, this has risen to the level where clearly the uh, terrorist who, you know, was the, in charge of the actual ex execution was British. So we have a, you know, British Prime Minister. It wasn't a British citizen that was killed. It was a U.S. citizen. We had a... DOJ as well as um, HSI under DHS, who is handling this investigation, to, well, they, they were supposed to be thought of as Americans, but then when I called and talked to the folks again yesterday to confirm whether they were American citizens or not, they were saying we're not saying, we're not confirming they're American citizens. However, you have conflicting documents within the court in the charging papers that say they're Americans. However, their last name is Ramirez, so we'll let the, the viewer decide for themselves, and they can go on and look up the, the court documents themselves as well. Cluster bombs. This is what these folks were carrying across the border. With a, you know, again, we have conflicting material from the charging papers to the court documents saying whether these these uh, cluster bombs were going north or south. In my opinion, it does not matter whether they are going north or south. The fact that you know civilians would have cluster bombs is something that should concern absolutely every single American, and this is something weapons terrorists would love to get their hands right. on. Right, and it doesn't matter whether it was going north or south. The bottom line is we've got to secure that southern border because, sure, there could be drug cartels. I doubt if a, an average person trying to break into this country illegally from Honduras is going to have materials to make a cluster bomb. But a terrorist could, and a drug cartel person could, and that's what we have to stop. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way. While we have the mass migration taking place down there in McClellan, Texas, ac across the Texas border there, this was actually taken, this took place in Del Rio, which is you know, west of that division. And you're talking to Border Patrol agents, and you're talking to a lot of different folks down there saying, A, they're seeing an increase in different kinds of explosives, hand grenades and such that are crossing the border, so that concerns them. But what really should be concerning is that majority of the focus is in a different region along the border, making it much easier for terrorists or cartels, whomever, to be bringing things of this nature across the border. Th these weapons were procured through a military base. These are U.S. military-grade 
cluster bombs. And they are bomblets that they found. They actually arrested these folks. They took statements. And according to ICE and HSI, this is an ongoing investigation, including multiple um, agencies across the uh, United States, I presume. I spoke with ITF, or ATF, and ATF says, you know what, we weren't called into the scene, which they should have been. However, it is not protocol, but something of this nature, ATF probably should have been on the scene. And there are just all kinds of questions that need to be answered here, and they're being very, very evasive. And my guess is they don't want this to make national news because it's going to go out and show the American people our borders aren't secure. We need to be concerned, and this ISIS threat is a number one priority. Well, let's face it. If, if the coyotes and the drug cartels know the soft spots along the border, don't you think the terrorists are going to figure out where they are, too? Of course they are. Absolutely. Well, Kimberly, thank you, and keep up the good work. Thank you. Coming up next, a legal look at the evidence in the killing of Mike.